Hello, this is Adrian Richards and uh, today in this uh, one of our series of uh, training videos on minor surgery I'm going to be showing you how to remove an epidermoid cyst. So epidermoid cysts are also known as sebaceous cysts, occur very commonly on the uh, torso and the one I'm going to be removing today is on the uh, presternal area. So I actually always quite enjoy removing epidermoid cysts because it's quite a challenge to try and get them out intact without rupture and you see in this video that I don't succeed in this and unfortunately rupture the cyst but this does happen on occasion. Um, it's made more likely to rupture the cyst uh, when the area has been inflamed and this lady's had um, a number of occasions of inflammation which required antibiotics to treat the cyst. So ideally treat the cyst before they become infected uh, and then you're more likely to get them out in one. Um, if they have been infected, much more scarring, much more difficult to get out as I'll show you. So here you can see this uh, lady's got a sebaceous cyst on her anterior neck uh, area. I'm cleaning it with aqueous chlor hexidine and I've already done some markings and put my local anaesthetic in. Here I am just marking again. I'm using a fine nibbed pen um, and I'm marking just where I'm going to make my lips. And it's very important to look out for a punctum, which is basically an open pore, and include that in your ellipse. Um, that might be slightly off centre, but do include it because that's the opening for the cyst. Um, so I just cut through the skin initially there, and then gently with my pointed tenotomy scissors, we've got a fine end just trying to set downwards by a mixture of sort of spreading and cutting onto the wall of the cyst. Now, on a fresh cyst, this has previously been infected, on a fresh cyst it's much easier. You basically cut down till you see the white glistening surface spreading um, onto the, uh, that plane and then cutting any um, uh, um, sort of material above that. Um, and then you should be able just to work gently around and get the cyst out. Now this cyst has been infected, you can see there, unfortunately I've just um, burst it, um, but it's important, even if you do burst it, do try and get all the uh, layer of the uh, cyst uh, out with the overlying skin ellipse. Closure is just like um, many other um, closures uh, we, we've uh, done with the subcuticular stitches uh, here. Uh, often, because it's been inflamed, the area is a bit scarred, so when you take the um, skin away, it does open up significantly. So I use these deep buried stitches of monocryl. So I use 5 ohm monocryl in this area. I'll probably put two of them in. So one uh, there, one now. Um, and that's enough, if done correctly, to take all the tension off the uh, incision um, and uh, have no tension on the skin. And as I've mentioned before, is the tension on the skin that causes a poor scarring. So these stitches really uh, do help avoid uh, that. The final layer of closure is a subcuticular PDS. This is either this is probably a 5-0, yeah. um, and I just run that along. Now, this again has got no tension on it. That's the important point, no tension on the skin. You can see there, that's the thing, and that's where I'm going to um, cut the stitches after surgery. Here's the glue on, and finally here's the micropore tape, which we like to keep on for one week following that surgery, and then that comes off and the ends of the stitches are trimmed. So I hope you enjoyed that, and I hope you sort of uh, understood uh, the reasons for using this technique to remove the epidermal cyst. So I think overall the keys to it are try and get the epidermal cyst before they've been infected because it's easier to remove them intact. Um, put the local anaesthetic in as I described and sew the skin up as I described. And you remove um, a little bit of the skin, a small ellipse, ideally with the punctum in it. So look for that punctum and include it in your ellipse. And it's often not in the centre of the cyst, it can be slightly offset. Um, so, uh, as I said, it's quite challenging to remove them, even for experienced plastic surgeons, to remove them intact, particularly if they're uh, being infected and there's a scarring. But it's quite uh, rewarding when you do, um, and you know I think it's something that's certainly worth uh, sort of learning how to do properly. So, if you'd like any more information about uh, this or any other types of uh, minor surgical uh, procedures, please watch our videos. We're aiming to provide a whole series of them covering all aspects of uh, treatment. If you've got any other queries, uh, please feel free to email us. Um, you know, we'd be happy to advise you uh, on uh, any aspects of minor surgery. So thank you uh, again for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it.